Hey guys, okay, so layers and morphing, what do they do? How do we use them and how can we take advantage of them? So first what we want to do is get right into it and we're going to go to tools and layers. Click right on that and then we're going to click on new layer which is this button right here. That's going to give you a new layer and it's going to record automatically, okay? And you can see me clicking some buttons here by mistake, don't worry about that. What we're going to do next though is click on the layer and then click on name just to rename it. We want to keep ourselves organized all the time. So I just want to make sure to call this liquid. You can have it anything you want. It doesn't really matter. The number is compulsory. It just, it's automatic. Okay, you can't really do anything about that. Next, I want to go to Dynamesh and show you that if you do try and Dynamesh with layers on, it'll tell you that you can't because a layer is active. And that is going to come into importance later on. What I am going to do is go to Morph Target and then click on Store the Morph Target, okay? If yours is grayed out, click on Delete Morph Target and then store it again. Next, you can see this uh, round button here. You just want to click on Record. That just means this layer is active. Now, I must tightly press Shift S and that's what happened there. To get rid of that, just press Control N. But what I am going to do is select the clay buildup and while we have the layer recording, what it's doing, just like a Photoshop layer, it's recording anything that we do on it. Okay, so here I'm just going to add some liquid striations. Okay, just something we want to do to our model. Layers are basically used for when you're unsure about what you're doing to your model and maybe you're, you know, just sort of concepting and you're not exactly sure if you're going to use it or not. So all I'm doing here is just getting some liquid layers in. And then once you have your concept or your whatever you want to get in there, what you can do is go over to the layer right down here and you can adjust it, okay? You can actually bring it down to make it less visible, okay? Or less prominent, okay? You can do it even, even more so. And you can actually raise that number up to make it even more prominent, okay? That was a bit much. I brought it down a, li a little bit. And maybe you like something like this, okay? And you can see layers are very versatile. You can actually bring it up or bring it down. Let's create a new layer here, okay? And we're going to press name again to rename this. I'm going to call this Bones, okay? And you can have pretty much, you know, as many layers as you want. I wouldn't go too crazy though because they do add to your file size, so just be careful with that. But what I'm going to do here is on the bone layer, just go to the knee, uh, the knee bone, and then maybe bump this up, okay? Because we do want to create a sort of evil look for this guy. So we want this bone to kind of protrude out. So next I'm just selecting my damn standard and just kind of framing this bone, suggesting that it's protruding, actually protruding from the skin. Okay, and once you have your bone there, you can again adjust it just like all, any other layer. Okay, so let's say that you bump this up and you realize, you know what, I kind of like this to be my default look. So what I am going to do is undo that and I'm going to duplicate this layer. Okay, just with that button right there. I'm going to switch them both on. And now you can see that's a bit much. So what I'm going to do is go to this layer over here, the last one, and bring it down just a little bit. Then I'm going to go to layer above it and click on Merge Down. That Merge Down will just merge it to the layer below it, and this will be sort of what the layer looks like as default. So you don't have to mess around with the intensity or anything of that sort. It's pretty useful. Okay, just like with any layer, you can switch them off, and you have the default look here, and switch them back on. Okay, and you can kind of play around with that. And eventually, when you've done enough work, you have something like this, okay? This is all done with layers, okay? Just what you saw me do there, I just did it here with more striations and more bones. Okay, you can see quite a lot of bone work here. Okay, and just like with the other layers, you can hide both of these. You can switch them back on. And now let's say that this area, okay, let's say, you, you know, you've been doing your striations and you're like, okay, I don't really want that area to have that many striations. So what you're going to do is go to the Morph Brush, okay, BM, and we're going to go down here to Morph Target. And you can see when I click on this, it says you need to have a layer recording. So I'm just going to click on Record, okay, then isolate this piece. When you isolate stuff while recording, you can actually see that it kind of grays out. Don't worry about it. But with your Morph Brush, what you can do is morph this piece out. You don't have to morph the whole thing, just a piece. And that's basically saying, okay, you know, I don't like this area, and I can just morph that out. Okay, maybe I don't like this area as well, I can morph that out. And there's a lot more control with layers. So you're using the Morph Brush to morph things out, 
back to its original state, basically. And if you hold Alt, you can morph it, you know, kind of add to the form. I, it's not really something I use the morph brush for, but if you want to, you can do that. But like I said, with layers, you can just bump the layer up instead of using the morph brush. Okay, so you know, once you're done, you can go over here and you can click on Bake All. And after you've clicked on Bake All, you know, something like this might happen, so don't freak out, okay? All you have to do is just go to Color, come down here and say Fill Object, okay? And that's just going to fill it with white, which is the default color. If you have red on your palette, it's going to fill it with red. And you notice that my Morph Brush still works. That's because we didn't mess with our Morph Target. If we do go back down to our Morph Target and we delete it, okay, and then store it again. See, it says you first need to store Morph Target, so I'm going to store it. Now this is our default base look. This is basically saying, okay, if I do something here over this, like maybe I use Clay Buildup or the Santa Brush, anything of that sort, I move it even. I can come back with my Morph, morph Brush and right just like that and morph this back out and this is my now default base look okay and that's pretty much it for layers and the morph target but i'm going to show you just a little bit more by undoing this just in case you wanted to do something like this what you can do is you can maybe switch off a few layers here so maybe a switch off the striations and i go back to my morph target Okay, I say delete morph target and store it. Now this look is the base look. So I can go back to my liquid layer, the striations layer, and record on that. And now if I morph out, it morphs all the liquid out, okay, all the striations, but it leaves the bony rocky look because I told it that this is the new morph target. You don't have to mess with it, okay? And you know, in case you wanted to do that, you would probably do something like this where you had the striations coming over just onto the bone like this and you can see how I'm combining different layers now kind of actually layering them on top of one another literally and all I'm doing here is you know maybe I go a little bit too far right and I can just morph these out as well because again that bone is part of the base morph target okay and maybe you've done all your work again you can go back hide all your layers go back to morph target delete it and store it again and now once again this look is our base look okay we can add as many layers as we want and then go back in here and morph it out completely. So you can see how versatile layers are and how well it plays together with the morph target. Okay, the morph target is great just for storing things and kind of manipulating it back and forth just like that. Another thing is that I don't usually use the morph target and layers early in my sculpt. It's usually during the second half and that's just personal preference. So those are kind of the caveats that you have to worry about. But other than that, that's pretty much it for this video and I will see you guys in the next one.